Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. And uh, today we're going to go through some uh, information on recruiting in baseball. My, co my guest today is Barry Davis. He's the head baseball coach for Ryder University. And welcome to the show. Thank you. No problem. So um, usually I start my guests um, where they went to college. So where did you go? Bridgewater College in Virginia. Oh, ah, okay. Great. And uh, did you play baseball there? Yes, I did. You did? Four years. Great. Um, so now you graduated from college, and um, what was the process that you took to become the head coach at uh, Ryder University? Well, it's a long process. Um, coming, out of, coming out of college, initially I wanted to be a high school coach. And then somewhere between sophomore, junior, senior year, somewhere in there, um, I saw something on the bulletin board about going to graduate school and getting a master's degree, and I thought that might be something I'd be interested in and possibly coach in college. So from that point, uh, I, I kind of worked my way through at George Mason University for a year in the Frostburg State to finish, which is originally where I wanted to go, but they didn't have a uh, graduate assistantship there, uh -huh. which, which was paying for my master's degree at the time. So I ended up at Frostburg State. Fortunately, took a job as a junior college head coach uh, in 1990. Uh, I was 24. I was fortunate and got very lucky to get a job in South Jersey at Gloucester County. Hmm. Stayed there 11 years, took a job in Georgia uh, as a head coach at a NAI school in uh, America's Georgia, Georgia Southwestern State University. People confuse that with Georgia Southern, yep. but it's not. Uh, <laughs> and then when Sonny Patera retired at Ryder, I put in for the job and uh, was very fortunate and lucky to be able to get the job and to come back to where basically I started my head coaching career, which was in New Jersey. Wow, so you did a whirlwind uh, uh, over the years. I've been, yeah, I've been down the road a few times. I've, this is year, to be starting my 27th year next year as a head coach, so yeah, it's been a while. So have you had your ups and downs throughout all of the uh, years at the different schools? Uh, we've had more ups and downs, but uh, we've, had, we've had enough downs to make you realize how important the ups are and how, and how you should enjoy those good years. But uh, for the most part, it's been a pretty successful uh, career. Great. Well, good. So um, recruiting at, the, at the, the college level for baseball, um, what is the process that you take to uh, start recruiting these high school kids um, and when do you start recruiting them? Is it freshman year, sophomore year? What, when does that start to happen? Well, it's, ch it's changed dramatically over the years. Um, the level that you're coaching at certainly is going to dictate the process for you. Uh, the higher the level you are, the teams you see playing in the College World Series currently, I mean, they're signing and recruiting sophomores, in some cases freshmen right out of high school right. because it's so competitive. I mean, you cannot physically talk to them, and so it's, it's a kind of odd how they were able to obtain them, but they can go to camps and they can do clinics and they do video. You know, you can video. There's a lot of ways you can uh, see a player. Yeah. Uh, because of the competitive nature of a, of a top-level Division One, take an LSU or a Florida or a Virginia, uh, those are some of the Vanderbilt, some of the top schools. They're, re they're signing or getting commitments from kids who are basically finishing their sophomore year. Um, a school like Ryder, school very similar to Ryder, we're probably looking like this summer we'll be looking at juniors, kids who are just finishing their junior year. Um, and then we have to kind of fiddle through and grab what the bigger schools may not want and then we can get those types of guys. Then it trickles down to Division II, um, Junior College, uh, Division III. Yeah. Because uh, if you're a Division III coach, you're, you're going to recruit differently than you would a Division I coach. Mm -hmm. But going back, in the old days, you used to send letters, make phone calls, and then, then, the, then that sort of evolved into uh, emails and text messaging now and, <laughs> and social media. You can use Twitter, and there's a lot of ways of doing it. Video is big, and... Websites are big, and so travel baseballs. It used to be American Legion. Now it's travel baseball, and um, it's just the landscape has changed, and it's uh, become a very arduous process to 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 stay on top of. Do you have a lot of people that help you throughout this? Well, the schools, the bigger school, meaning I keep referring back to bigger schools, are certainly staffed and funded and supported sometimes more than a school like us. But we have assistant coaches that get out. You know, we're, we're not, we don't have a full-time staff, 
but we have assistant coaches that go out. And nowadays, you can go to these tournaments and see hundreds of kids without having to really travel. You can go to Flemington, New Jersey uh -huh. for a weekend or a week and see, I don't know, a couple hundred kids. Right. And uh, so it, it saves on a lot of the money and the travel that, that could be an expense for a school like ours. But uh, certainly, um, it has changed, and uh, assistant coaches can get out. Yes. And do you do you do you comb the the country for these kids? Well, it's a good question. We have, you know, we'll, we'll, we've recruited kids from California. Uh, we 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 have a uh, young man who just graduated. And he was from Illinois, uh, but that those are junior college players, and they're recruited a little different, like more like sight unseen, going off recommendations without really traveling out to see them. Whereas mm -hmm. other schools may do that. We get most of our players from New Jersey and the Pennsylvania uh, tri-state area, New York, Delaware, so to speak. Uh -huh. um, so we, we don't have to travel too far uh, to see a number of players. And so what are these kids, um, what, what are some of the qualities these kids have to have to make it to, a, I guess, a mid-major type of Division I program like Rider University? Well, that's a, that's a good question because we seem to get a lot of kids that are not developed uh, right away. You know, uh, an example maybe uh, we had a pitcher named Mike Thomas who came out of uh, Falston, Maryland, who wasn't really offered too many Division One scholarships, if any, besides our, ourselves. And now he's pitching in, in the or, uh, Dodgers organization at the Double AA, A, Triple A level, wow. and uh, had a tremendous career for us. But you know, coming out of high school, he, you know, local colleges that are that are probably more, um, I don't know, stereotypically uh, higher level than us, I, without naming the schools, bigger schools than us, would not offer this young man a scholarship mm. because they didn't think he was good enough. And then he comes to Ryder, gets a chance to play, develops into a very good player. So the type of player we get sometimes is a, is a uh, you know, an underdeveloped uh, athletic kid who, for whatever reason, hasn't, hasn't developed his baseball skills, but mm. being able to get out on the field. Now, but for the most part, though, you have to be able to play. I mean, you, yeah. you, you can't just show up and, and put on a uniform and go. These kids are all competitive, and our league's competitive. Yeah, so, so now these kids that, that you're recruiting that are out there, are you um, actively looking at them at the high school level, or is it really the outside the high school at all these travel leagues and things like that? I think the travel leagues have taken over because you're seeing them, like a lot of times during baseball season, we're playing. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to get to a high school game um, a lot of times, uh, maybe the local games, depending on who you are, and again, budgets and, and, and staffing. Um, but we see most of the players in the summertime. Okay. And then, and then if you are not sure about a young man and maybe then you follow him into his senior year of high school, then you, you can go out and see him. Or you can go to the high school games after you've signed him. Hmm. So there, there's a number of ways. But I would say most of the recruiting, the majority of the recruiting is done in the summer and done through the travel ball scene. And, and grade-wise, to get into Ryder, um, you know, what are some of these baseball players, what do they have with grades? Well, our, our structure and our scholarship structure forces us to recruit, for the most part, academic kids. Uh, most of the kids we bring in are on some type of academic merit scholarship, which allows us to uh, supplement, so to speak, our athletic money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we use that combined to, to uh, make the offer as attractive as possible. Um, in a different situation, you might, if you didn't have to go, if we were fully funded, yeah. you might be able to go after a player that falls a little under the merit scholarship level, but is still uh, a student who can succeed at Ryder. And we're not at that position yet. But right now, that's, that's the type of kid we go after. So when we look at the grades, look at the SATs, look at the GPA, that sometimes can eliminate who we're going to recruit, regardless of how good a player they are. Gotcha. So, so now it comes down to uh, their athletic ability, their grades. Um, how are you, uh, I'm assuming at the college level, they're breaking up these scholarships for baseball because you, I guess you don't have enough scholarships to, to field the whole team. No. Okay. Even so. the best schools only have 11.7 scholarships to be uh, distributed over 27 players. Okay, so, so, you do, so you're you breaking can do, a... You can do the math yourself, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you split it evenly, no one would even get a half scholarship. Yeah, so so you're, you, you need those other merit scholarships and things like that to, to work something. So now some of the, some of the families out there, uh, their biggest concern is, 
Um, you know, my kid goes to a Division One program. It's all about the sport. It's not about the academics. What, what's your take on that? Well, I think ultimately most of the parents that I speak with, most of the parents that I speak with, I would say the, the highest majority, of, most all, academics is important. Uh, one, for our situation, like I just mentioned earlier, they're already academically sound when they get there, so academics is an important part of their future. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they say when they're not in the office, you know, how they want their kid to have a good experience on the baseball field. Some parents are a little more, um, I mean, I don't know what the word would be, a little more concerned about whether they're going to play or not. You know, um, you know, they're, they're, I mean, you look at our roster and we're recruiting, we have six shortstops or something, and, they, and they're a shortstop, and they're probably questioning why, why you're here. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of a, an extreme answer. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, I would say education is important at Ryder, and I think they recognize that. The cost of the school and the money we're able to offer them, education had better be uh, one on yeah. the list, or 1A. Uh, now, the kid may look at it differently. You know, baseball is important, and I don't think he would be there if it wasn't for baseball. I don't think a lot of students at Ryder that are athletes would be at Ryder if it wasn't for the athletic program. I mean, mm -hmm. Although the academic programs are sound, there's a lot of academic programs that are sound across the country. But uh, athletics is important, and, and that's why they're there. So some of the parents that are out there as well, uh, they've come up to me and they've asked me questions like, um, you know, my son goes to... Uh, play at the college level and then you know something breaks their arm their leg um, and then they're thrown to the side like a piece of meat of some sort and everything is gone right and they don't have any way of paying for college any, uh, anymore what, what's your take on something like that well we have never done that uh, if they're on a scholarship we've honored the scholarship through the the years that they're eligible to play we've had uh, probably a half dozen cases in my 11 years where someone is either torn a knee, uh, had Tommy John surgery, uh, and this year we had our best pitcher or one of our best pitchers uh, had a stress fracture in his elbow and he has two years of eligibility left and we will, you know, we will honor the scholarship through the five years. Hmm. We haven't had any, anything dramatic where someone's career was completely ended and they um, stayed on and, and finished and, and we had to do that. I would like to think that if that were to happen we would certainly honor the scholarship through their, you know, their graduation years, and Great. certainly every situation is different and yeah. and how you handle it. But uh, I would I would feel strongly about making sure we got through those uh, four or five years. So now, um, <clears throat> what's the process? What 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 do you go through? What's the first step in recruiting these kids? Well, you you receive so many emails and uh, from from people from all walks of life <laughs> in all areas of the world about how good a player this kid is and that kid. So we kind of filter through that. Um, there's a lot of ways. I mean, you could see a kid at a camp as a youngster, as a 10th grader, 9th grader, and you would follow up on him. He's interested in Ryder. Uh, we've had that. But for the most part, you identify him early. Um, you know, we can con when, find out when the contact p period is, when you can contact them with a phone call. Right. Uh, you can email them. Uh -huh. uh, usually a visit, some type of unofficial visit is, uh, prompts the, the, the recruiting process, right. if he's interested. And then you try to get him on campus as soon as possible, get the parents on campus, uh, answer the questions. Uh, if you feel strongly about that young man and you're able to put a package together very early based on what his credentials are, you do that. Um, provided you need that position, there's a lot of times a lot of people like we might have a certain uh, we don't we don't need any first basements. I might not need any first baseman for three years. Mm. So you know, there's a lot of people out there that are first basemen, and we don't need them. And right. uh, I think some people are offended sometimes by that thing. Well, they're not interested in my. Well, we don't. Why would I bring you on, and right. you're not going to play? Right. So the so the position need, really need factor a lot. need factor is is important. Uh, but being able to see them, and then if you're you know I've seen it's it's crazy. Sometimes I, I haven't seen guys but once. Or sometimes, in some cases, haven't seen them at all wow. and recruited them, and they've been very good. And I've had other players I've, I've went to see 10, 11 <laughs> times and to make sure that I think I'm right, and I've been wrong. Wow. Really wrong. So I've missed on some players, and, uh, but I've been right on some, too. And we got lucky a few times yeah. uh, along the way.
Well, that's that's amazing. That is very. Interesting. I'm probably more lucky than I am good at it. So I, I wouldn't say I'm the I'm the greatest uh, eye of talent uh, sometimes. So so a flip of the coin sometimes uh, in recruiting it, it means a lot. It can be. You look <laughs> at a few things. You, I think one of the things I learned from uh, one of my uh, former colleagues, um, Paul Keys, was at the Virginia Commonwealth. He always just said, you know, you look at guys that have been successful in your program and try to use those as comparisons. Mm -hmm. So if you see a guy with physical tools that matches up to somebody you've had that has been very successful in your program, he's probably a guy that will be successful. So. Great. Uh, so that's that's one of the measuring sticks, I think. We look so, at. so now, the kid comes to Rider University. Um, when does it, when does it start? Is it August, July? Um, you know, when when does baseball start for this for this young man? Right. Probably. I mean, physically, once he's on campus, it yeah, does. Yeah, well, once but, once he graduates in June, May, okay. June, whenever, whenever that is, you know, what what's the when what's he looking at as a as a calendar year to start his baseball career at college? Well, if he's a you know if he's a high school kid, he graduates June for the most part, and he probably spends the summer playing summer ball for either an American Legion team or some type of travel team. Mm -hmm. He usually those guys finish those kids finish in late July, first of August, and then they they basically have a month until they arrive on campus. Uh, but we're we're in contact with them from time to time. You know, not every day, obviously, but but, right. but maybe once or twice a month, just making sure that you know they're working out and in shape when they realize what they have to do. So they're always it's always there, getting prepared to, to get on campus. Right. Uh, and then the first week, basically, they spend just getting acclimated to you know, get, getting in the dorm, you know, knowing where everything is, getting their class, making sure everything you know is all lined up and ready to go. And then we yeah. then we meet and we pretty much start. I think our starting date usually every year, give or take a day, is September fifteenth. Okay. To get on the field and uh, we and that's fall ball, fall baseball for about five weeks. Okay, and then so that takes you until what November? No, probably the, about third week of October. Okay. And then that, that usually ends on a weekend, on a Saturday, and then on the Monday we'll start our off-season program with weight training, which we've, we've been doing up and we start the first week anyway. Okay. It just gets extended and gets a little bit more, um, more emphasis is put on the conditioning phase and less emphasis is put on the actual baseball playing because you only have eight hours a week right. after the fall season ends. Once you designate your fall season to end, you have eight hours a week, and that pretty much continues till November. Uh, to the end of November around Thanksgiving. And then, so now, um, Christmas time comes rolling around. Are they doing anything throughout the Christmas break? They're, they know when they're supposed to come back, and they know when they're coming back. The, the pitchers are, are given programs, and they know what the, what the expectations are physically for them to be ready to go uh, with uh, 30 pitches, say, give an uh, example, 30 pitch full speed come January 25th, say, give okay. take a day. And then the position players obviously need to get their arms in shape, swing, be hitting a lot. You know, with most of these kids can find places. So you give them a go. program right. and they should stick to that program. They hit and throw and they're ready to go. Because we play a game February 20th. Wow. So it's quick. And it's it's cold out? Or are you somewhere else, someplace warm? Well, well we've, we try to get as far south as we can. But these last couple of winters have been sort of tough. I mean, we yeah. played in Durham, North Carolina last year. And I think all three games were in the 30s. Wow. So. Unbelievable. So, so the springtime when when does the it, does it start around the the last week of February? The practices begin the last week of January. Okay. And then uh, games can start as early as mid February. We start usually a week after the first week that they're allowed. And that takes you all the way until May. May. And then if you're in the tournament of some sort, June. June. Okay. So let's go into the team itself. Uh, you've been there how many years again? Eleven. Just finished my eleventh. Eleven year. years. So out of the eleven years, um, do you want to give a little sense of where Ryder's been in eleven years? Well, uh, the last, the first three, you know, I took over the, the program. They were players from the previous staff. So it took us a couple years to get, you know, I wouldn't say my players, but the recruiting process where, you know, there were guys that I recruited. Uh, We've won two conference tournament championships, and we've been the regular season champion twice. So for the last eight years, we've either won the tournament or finished first. Um, we've had we've had really good seasons. We've had uh, a, we've had one or two uh, rough years along the way. I think 2014 probably 
uh, was a year that we would all like to forget in terms <laughs> of wins and losses. Uh, but it certainly taught us, you know, and like we talked about earlier, the ups, the highs, and the lows. Sure. That year was a low year. Uh, we had great kids, but we had some injuries and we had some things that, that came up. But uh, this year we were able to bounce back and uh, win the league, and, and we had a, a very good team this year. Great. Fantastic. So now, um, is, the, is the practices, um, do they do a lot during the practice times? Well, you're looking at the guy that's going to set up the practices, so I would, I, would, I would hate to tell you that we don't do anything. Certainly, we, we try to be organized. We try to run it. Uh, we've sort of found a philosophy and a system that seems to have worked with preparing our players to get them ready to play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like anything else. You, you know, you don't want to mess with too much if, if you feel like it's working. Now, we adjust from year to year. We, we self-evaluate. I certainly self-evaluate my, myself. And there's a lot of things I have to work on to get to get better. I'm still trying to to, to learn how to get this get this uh, coaching thing down, but, uh, <laughs> because there's always something that that, that that you can do a little better. Sure. But I think that our practices are organized. I think there's a purpose. We don't go too long in our practices. We and I think the guys would, if they were here to tell you, I think they would say they would agree with me that they're organized. And I, I do think there's a purpose and an objective to it. And we try to adjust it based on how we're playing, what's things that are going on. I mean, there's some psychology involved and, you know, trying to keep them loose because baseball, you have to kind of play when, yeah. when things are loose. It's a tough game to play tight. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, if you've played, you know, the, yep. the, the tighter you get, the worse you play. So we got to try to stay loose. So they, we try to do a good job with that. Well, good. Um, so um, grade-wise grade, grade wise and, and academic-wise, um, if someone's struggling in school, is there anything in place for these athletes where is there any type of tutoring or anything like that 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 the, uh, the baseball team helps, helps them with? Well, I mean, each student is different. Each student comes in with uh, sometimes some of them are high-level presidential scholars with 1250 SAT and 3.5s, and there's others that are not. Uh, we're certainly aware of who may or may not struggle. We've been very fortunate lately to have uh, had good students. And we haven't had to deal with uh, any or too right. many issues. But in the event there is tutoring on campus, there there are faculty representatives that can help us get them back on track. We have enough in place to identify the couple that may have issues. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, we've been very fortunate, but. You know, from time to time, you know, a young man may may struggle, maybe having some difficulty, and then we have to kind of pull him off and get him back on track. And we have people that can do that. Yeah, and and um, you hear a lot with all the different types of sports, with all kinds of issues that go on. Um, does that happen basically in uh, all schools in the United States? There's so there's so much news out there these days. Kids doing the wrong thing, taking pictures with a beer uh, outside of campus, that kind of stuff. Um, what do you say about those kind of things? Well, we're we're informed uh, quite a bit. Our athletic director Don Harnum does a great job. Um, he's certainly conscientious of the uh, of how athletes are viewed across the country. You know, I think Ryder in general uh, has done a very good job. And uh, but there are incidents come up. You know, from time to time, a lot of them I don't even know that they're occurring. You know, there are other sports and other teams that I'm unaware of, and it's certainly handled in house and, and dealt with. But for the most part, we've been very good. We certainly talk to our players about making the right decision, mm -hmm. making the right choice, doing the right thing. Think before you act. I mean, along those lines. And we're not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we haven't had issues from time to time with a player or two, but. We certainly look at it as a, as a learning situation, a chance sure. to teach, and hopefully it won't get into a situation where you'd have to do something uh, like re remove someone from from a roster and certainly uh, change the course of their life when they first, so they came there to get an education to play ball. But there are situations that come up, and we certainly have handled it. And I think, like I said, the athletic department as a whole has done a good job. Great, good. Well, uh, we're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually what I ask my guests is, um, what kind of advice do you want to give the families that they have their son that wants to go to a Division I school 
or any type of school, you know, what advice do you want to give them? That's a, that's a tough question, and, and it's a good question because I think I played Division three. and now baseball wasn't played like it's played now. I think the one thing that I think that they do, uh, it's a tough, is that they overwork these guys, these gals, too, in softball. Sure. I mean, they're 10 years old, they're on travel teams, and they're, they're playing games and games and games. Um, I grew up from a time period when baseball season ended, we put the glove down, we got the football out. When football <laughs> yeah. season ended, we got the basketball out. And we, we just, we played all the sports. Um, and I think that uh, so much emphasis is put on them getting a scholarship. They have to get a scholarship instead of just going to a place where they can play, where they know they're going to play and have a great experience. Not every player is a Division One player, regardless of what mom and dad think. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a high-level game. And most of the coaches at this level are paid to win. So it's not, it's not a hobby. And I think a lot of them, uh, they put a lot of pressure on, on their sons and daughters to, to try to reach that level. My advice would be find a place that you fit into that you are going to have a great experience. And if that school that happens to be a Division I school, understand the ramifications of the level that you're getting involved with understand what's what your expectations are talk to your coaches find out what it is because uh, it, it is a do, kind of a dog eat dog type of thing in baseball nowadays you you watch the college world series there's more money involved much like you see in basketball and football that baseball is growing and the pressure to win is certainly there more than it used to be so find a place you can play Find a place where they have your major and you can have a great experience. And I think that's the one thing that comes to mind for me. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.